I was born January the 1st, 1909, on the Ottawa Reserve here in Ottawa County. My schooling was of the Seneca Indian School and Chilaco Indian School. I am a, of the Chippewa and Ottawa and Potawatomi descent. And my tribe here in Oklahoma is a fragment tribe of the Ottawa tribe that was once established north, northern part of Michigan. Our separations came about the turn of the century of 1600 and 1700. There were five clans. There was the Kishkaguns, or the Bear Clang, the Thin Goes, the Gray Squirrel Clang, the Kenoshi, the Fish Clang, the Nisakitans, the Fork People, and the Nigaiji, the Order Clang. In Ohio, they lived in what they call wickiups, where there'd be several families living in one long house, and it was mostly covered with bark. And then in Kansas, they lived in log houses. Then pretty much so, it's when they came to Oklahoma in the early period, they were living in log houses. Most houses didn't have any floor in, just a dirt floor. I know my mother, she born about a quarter of a mile where I was born. She was born in a log house. It didn't have no floor in it, just dirt floor. but. They'd got little margin when I was born. It did have a floor in it, although it did have clapboard roof. From the allotment time of 1892, we were living under what was called the tribal law. We was living under the old, the old tribal constitution. After statehood, these laws were became obsolete because they didn't apply to the to the new state laws. Our laws. Prior to that, or prior to statehood, all marriages was performed by the tribe, by the chief and council or a judge that they had at the present that, that, that at that time. After the Lockman, I there wasn't much difference than it was when they was living on common. Most of them never did stay on their allotments. They uh, continued to move around. Some left the tribe. Some went to uh, to California and here, and then they just went every direction. Lots of them, soon after they went to Clamoring, in order to though that they could sell their land, in order to make it a competency role, they had to have uh, someone to uh, voucher that they were less and less Indian than they were. If they get down less low enough to agree, they was considered competent, and they would make that competency role. And after once making the competency role, they would uh, sell their lands. And most of them would uh, go out and work, do whatever they could, whatever kind of work they do. Most of them were never trained to do any work. They wasn't uh, skilled in no work whatsoever. And lots of them was worse off than before they'd ever made the allotment. The older members uh, that was full bloods and those that had allotments, they, they were held as wards and were never released. They couldn't get no, they couldn't sell their land. So that's the reason that most of the full bloods till their death had their allotments. On these customs and traditions, my grandmother, my father's mother, was one of the historians of the tribe. Her knowledge was, was obtained from her grandmother, and it was handed on down to me. That's how come me to know the traditions and customs of my people. First, 
know your name and your tribe. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, my name is Lottie Nantesis Baldo. And my tribe is the Ottawa tribe. And I've just been raised and around, born and raised right there in the Ottawa Indian Nation. Where was that? South of here, south of, uh, east of Miami. Must be about uh, 10 miles east. It's uh, kind of south and east. And I've been around, been here, around all the old, the old times, which is all gone now. I couldn't recollect or recall how many years it's been, but I was here and I worked amongst them. That is, you know, I'd go and cook and wash or do anything that I could do. And and I'm still around here yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I've I've had some easy times and I've had some hard times. And now I've got old where I can't do nothing. Ain't no good for nothing. <laughs> but I try to keep keep a home. And I guess I will as long as I can move around. They kind of had different ways of living. They do now. I don't know what they do. You got a tin can, some paper sacks. I don't know what that was. How'd you wash your clothes? Wash them on the washboard. <laughs> and I raised my kids washing on the washboard. We had to wash on the washboard, and every two weeks we'd boil, boil our clothes so they wouldn't get dingy. Yeah. It was hard, hard going. We had to walk to school and all that. Now they have buses come to the door and pick them up. Still, they don't like to go to school. Time has really changed. When you look back and see how you used to do, and it was a pleasure then. But now it's, it's just look out. You have to look out. Maybe somebody might hit you or somebody run over you or something. It's kind of a, you kind of live in fear, in a way. But them days you didn't, everybody was happy, glad to see each other, shake hands with each other. No, it's quite a difficult. Some do and some don't. But that's, that's a change. Where'd you go to school, Tom, when you were a young fella? Well, I first went to Wyandotte. Uh -huh. Then I came to independent school. Then I went to one of the schools at Haskellinski. Well. In North Kansas. Yeah. And that's where I ran up with Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show. Well. And I traveled with him all that year. Uh huh. So I ran out that summer. And uh, then in the fall, he sent me home to the mother. Mm hmm. How old were you then? Uh, how old was I? When, when you I went was, with the Wild West show? Uh, I guess I was a, uh, about 13. Hmm. About 13 years old. Well, you started out young, making yeah. your living, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, I started with him for four years uh, after I left school or graduated out of school. Mm -hmm. And uh, They gave you the name of White Cloud. Was that uh, Buffalo Bill? Buffalo Bill. Yeah. Buffalo Bill. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo Bill was certainly a colorful yeah. figure in his day, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. Uh, very fine old gentleman. See, I, uh, I spent a half a century in the entertainment field. Well, that's a long time. Yeah. And I made it quite a name for myself. Well known all over the United States. Uh, appearing on, uh, on television, mm -hmm. motion pictures, wild west shows and circuses. Mm -hmm. I was a well. That's an exciting. Um, I was a circus acrobat one time. Yeah. I first learned uh, a little knowledge about acrobatics when I was going to wind up, mm -hmm. and later on I I composed uh, 
many heat uh, in acrobatics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was up as late as I, as the year that I was uh, uh, past 50 years old, I was uh, an outstanding hand balancer. Mm -hmm. And I uh, appeared on uh, uh, many uh, stage shows. Then uh, after I went with uh, Little Brothers Wild West Show, uh, then I decided to make my way out to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and right away I got a, got a job. Mm -hmm. uh, had uh, numerous uh, speaking roles wow, in motion pictures. And I made uh, many Indian pictures. Mm -hmm. I made uh, a picture back in the 20s mm -hmm. called uh, Flaming Frontier, based on Custer's uh, yeah. military life, mm -hmm. doing city of singing roles in his trouble. Yeah. I actually seen him sitting though. He was with Buffalo Bill. Is that right? Yeah, he was with yeah, uh, Buffalo Bill. Something very few people can say. Yeah, I I met Annie Oakley <laughs> uh, on Buffalo Bill's Wild Show, and uh, I know all about the Old West. Mm -hmm. I knew this country in here was a, when it was nothing ball, but a ball prairie, no fences, whatever. And uh, you just uh, got on a horse and take him across country. Mm. Or if, if you didn't have a horse, you just take across that. Uh, country uh, hit these cow paths. Yeah. And uh, this was uh, one time uh, a cattle country. Mm -hmm. And uh, back to Springs uh, was a, count, a cattle center where mm -hmm. they uh, where they uh, sold their cattle. Yeah. And uh, from back to Springs they uh, took the drove the cattle herd to uh, uh, Dodge City. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, uh, when I was a young fella, I seen buffalo right back west of here on a on the plane. Well, that's live buffalo. I've I seen uh, uh, groups of Indian hunters uh, still in their feathers, hmm. riding bareback or, yeah. or uh, hunting buffalo. And I'm going to bear, be buried either on Lookout Mountain with Buffalo Bill, mm -hmm. or I'm going to be buried uh, uh, down here in the Ottawa Cemetery. <laughs> This is Ada King Savoy, Ottawa. You you were mentioning that succotash is the uh, is a traditional dish you uh, make it. It's of dried corn, you know dried corn? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The moon sticks the brown beans and, and the hair beans and have corn chips like that. It's real thick. Bacon or something like that. Boiled? Mm-hmm. There's lots of good boiled in there. And that's what we always had um, when I long back in November. You know, Grandpa and Grandma would be in a grocery store. They'd all have this Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And then if they had a family reunion, they all had it. You know, we did have family reunions. And everybody came over and had their big pasta. But they always used the corn they drank. Not, not store bought stuff at all. <laughs> No, we didn't have that there. I grew up on uh, your allotment. Mm -hmm. My mother's allotment. Mm. Well, that's both of their allotments. It was across that shop in the We still have it. We still have the, my mother's original place, my brother had. Did you farm it? No, he rents it out. Did you farm it when you were a kid? Oh, my brother's kid. What, uh, what kind of, I noticed that there's practically no farming here anymore. Uh, what did they raise out there? Well, like I say, we had the dried corn, see, so we always had the corn patch. And then potatoes that lasted us all the way. And the onions we planted again. And anything that was uh, dried beans and we would have them, see. It's just, just what we had to eat. Didn't sell anything. Did you keep uh, livestock at all? Yeah, we had some cows and pigs. Chickens? Chickens, yeah. Ducks. Oh, we had all kinds of pets around there, too. <laughs> Cats and dogs. How'd you, where'd you go to school? I went to Indian school at City Kidney School and I went to Haskell. Mm -hmm. Indian school. When it's a long time ago. <laughs> what was it like at those Indian schools? 
Are they boarding school? Mm -hmm. well, it was just like to say, if you can get along with people, that's the, nothing is bad. For you. And now it's dreadful. With all the rules they had down, you know, you knew why. Well, there's a many Iowa kids there that you, uh, you kind of know. Mm, let's see. I guess we were the only ones that went there, but there was a lot of them passed away. Then my, some of my brothers and sisters went to Sherlock, and there was different lot of us up there. So, see, three of us went to high school, and the rest of them went to Sherlock. Interesting. Uh, wasn't it kind of a shock to come out of a family and a farm and get sat into a boarding school? Well, uh, whenever you know you have to, you know. You know of course, we didn't realize it then because uh, we was all so young, you know. Mm -hmm. But whenever my mother told us we had to go to get an education, you know. Well, the other ones talked to us, little ones, you know. And it was kind of bad the first year, really, for me. Because then I was away from my mother. <laughs> and then my baby brother and my uncle. Every time they'd start up that hill over there, we'd start crying. <laughs> You're, you're a guide, Jensen, you live here in Miami? Oh, yeah. And you're, your father was the chairman for how long? He was elected in 1929, I believe, and he quit in 1959. That's a long time. Yeah, he was in out here. Was he the one that was the county commissioner? Yeah. And the Republican? Yeah. <laughs> He must have been quite a man to get elected as a Republican here. Yeah. <laughs> he got elected three times. Yeah. Everybody tripped him. <laughs> and he ran for the representative. And uh, there was a woman running against him out here in the picture. He was a punker. And she just barely beat him by about 50 votes. Everybody come wanting to contest it, and he says, oh, I didn't want to go much anyway. He says, I just said, no. <laughs> <laughs> that she, she won it, let's just do it, let it go with that. Is there such a thing as an Indian vote? Yes, there is. Uh, hold on, particular issues or particular party? Or? Not particular party, it's most generally on a particular person. I remember when he ran for county commissioner the first time, and some of those Indians came and they were Democrats, and they said, now we want to vote for Guy. He says, how do we do it? They never had split a belt. Yeah. How do you have to be a Republican? His grandfather was. I mean, his father was. His father was in there. Civil War from the Iowa, he was a German drummer boy. Really? And his policy was, he said, he says, I never can see why an Indian would be a Democrat. On account of Andrew Jackson. Went back that far. Yeah. <laughs> By George. <laughs> you study the history of Andrew Jackson, you see what his thinking was. Well, I know what <laughs> <laughs>
one morning he just got enough of it, he just got up and sat at his pony and said, I haven't seen all the world I want to see. And went in and told his mother, she says, I'll be back someday. She said, well, don't forget where you live. She gave him a little gold ring. I said, you wear this. He rode off and he went, wound up in Texas driving cattle after the Civil War. And I guess he got the Baxter Spring Candace and got broke. And he said, I'll come in to be in here. He went to work for a fellow down here in the country and met my grandmother and married her. Tell me, what, uh, what do you think can happen with uh, Jim? I'm from South Dakota, man. Yeah. The big, big Western tribes of the land. Yeah. How do you. How do you keep a tribe in existence when you don't have a land base and uh, when you don't, uh, you not only don't have any full blood, you don't hardly have any quarter blood to ask yeah. you anymore. Uh, how, how do you keep saying we are all our Indians? Bar heritage. Would you like to explain to me, Mr. Barlow, about this uh, intertribal organization of yours? Well, uh, we just want to know about something, what we have here in Oklahoma. Well, this, um, I want to know where the Ottawas are and how they fit in these various organizations. Well, see, it's right here in the corner of the county. Ottawa County, we have these eight tribes. Uh, Eastern Shawnee, Duncan Cayuga, Wyandotte, Quapaw, Ottawa, Fiore, Miami, and Modoc. And uh, we all decided about 1965 that we joined together and formed an intertribal council. These are all the tribes that are all in, tribes in that this county? All the tribes that have permanent residence in Ottawa County. All of them. All of them have permanent. We have a lot of, a lot of grants. We have right now, I believe, something like 17 different grants. And it doesn't make any difference whether you're terminated or not. No, that, well, the only, only, the only project that terminated tribes are barred from, and that's the BIA project. Well, what about this clinic? Are, are the um, Ottawa's going to be able to go to it? Uh, no, not until we are reinstated. Now, this clinic is evidently going to be, uh, looks like it might be uh, uh, operated by the Seneca Cayuga. Uh, it's going to operate the clinic. Are you, are you on the board of the Paramount Hospital? Yes, I'm on, the, I'm on the area board, what we call area board of the Paramount Hospital. And I'm also on the big board, which is the statewide board of Oklahoma City. How can it be that you are on the governing body of all these hospitals well, and they won't take care I, I, of you? I just don't know. I don't know that. <laughs> I can't tell you why. That's, that's uh, we do that. fascinating to me. It's always been that way. Tell me about how your tribal council uh, and uh, the Ottawa tribe is, is organized. Yeah, we're, we're organized. We have a business committee which consists of a chief and a second chief, a first councilman, a second councilman, and a secretary and treasurer. That that's the, consists of the board, what they call the board, and of course all the members are, are tribal members. You've always used the title chief. That's what we use, title chief. As I can remember, we've always had the chief. And your um, your ancestor, Mr. King, was it? Yeah, Joseph was a, Badger King. Who was the chief? He was an elected chief. He was elected chief when when uh, when the, he was elected as acting chief at the, at the time that the Wilson Chief Wilson was killed. Then he later then was elected to the next regular term of their meeting for a period of two years. Then in later years, he also served another term. This, um, this graveyard of the Ottawa's that we just visited, how many, you have about eight and a half acres there? Yeah, we have a total of five acres in one plot and one and a half acres in another and an acre and a half in another, which makes up the eight acres. You have nine sheets buried there? We have twelve buried there. Twelve buried there. Twelve buried in the cemetery. That's, uh, 
There can't be another cemetery in the world. Is that well, right? not according to news places uh, that, that, that there's no cemetery that they know of that has as many as 12 feet buried in it. Jennison of the Ottawa. Um, was this chieftainship hereditary, basically? Or? Uh, elective, as, as far, uh, after they came to Oklahoma, I know it was elective. But all of us can trace common ancestors. Mm -hmm. You're all kind of related. We've got uh, the, the oldest one to come down here died at 116 years old. And on this roll I've got in 66, she was 90 years old. And she lived to, uh, 16 more years after that. And she's buried out here. She was one of the first ones buried. And, Judy, and Jane Phelps. She's in a, and she's her common ancestor. Because they say she was a grandmother of this tribe, this some way or another, collateral or, or lineal descent, she was she would have been connected to everybody. Apparently. What did they do when they came here from Kansas? Did they farm or they went to farming? Yeah, they were scratching. The farmers, yeah. What what did, we what, were what each, do you farm each, for up here? Corn, wheat, potato. Each yeah. member of the tribe a lot of they did the land. They, after so long a time. Yeah, after state. But, not, they, but they, after, after we were here, there were a lot of 80 acres out of this land we yeah. bought, each, each head right. I didn't get in the land, but I wasn't old enough. See, my mother had her own lot in 80 acres. See. Everyone had 80 acres of land. They did down until it was, uh, the allotment act was closed, and then we had a little surplus land. Yeah. What do you see now for the, uh, 
I don't know just quite how to put this. How do you, how do you see oh, it's really nice. the future of the Ottawa's? I mean, uh, in a hundred years, is there going to be such a thing as an Ottawa? I hope there will be. It's. Uh, I'm an Indian. I, there, uh, if I had a million dollars, I would be more proud of my Indian blood than I would the million dollars. Me too. See, but that's all. I'm not. I'm not wanting to get that I have in there. always been proud of my Indian blood. I guess it's like being a uh, 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 left-handed second baseman or something like that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's the uh, uh, uniqueness of. Uh, uh, I feel like I, I just feel like being an Indian. And I'm, I'm a little different. I'm, I'm not in a snobbish way, but I just feel like I've got a little more part of the United States. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of see a re-emergence of Ottawa the pride. Is pride is what you're saying. We was proud of our Indian blood a long time before the television. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't have worked as hard as we did. To, to, uh, our first claim was filed in guy's name, my name, and Bronson's name. Is, I've, even, I've even got to briefs. Commission on the Tom well, your your business manager said that he thought that the main reason the Ottawa's wanted to be reinstated was psychologically just to say that that's by right. God they recognize that's us. That's right. So just give me back and say you're an Indian. That's all I want to tell me. I don't want any of the free hospitals. Uh, I don't want any other free stuff to do myself. Uh, but they don't. Uh, the United States government or anybody doesn't exactly owe us as individuals anything, but they owe a little old tribe that they have goofed from one end of the, from the eastern seaboard, Canada, Ohio, Indiana, Kansas, down to here, that they, they were try, try to do away with it like vermin as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. uh, but we survived. Realistic hope that they will get unterminated, uh, or are they just I, I kind of doubt it. I really do, really, and I hate to say that, but <laughs> I was at a meeting when uh, when Bruce was in commissioner, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they asked to be reinstated, and he said we are working on two or three small tribes out in California, and we'll just add your name to the list. Well, this was oh my God, like four or five years ago, mm -hmm. and nothing happened yet. And that came right from the commissioner's mouth. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm just a little doubtful that they can ever get enough. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>